Welcome to the Supreme Resort Land v. World, a podcast about Disneyland and Walt Disney World, and which is the Supreme Resort. Each episode, we will discuss and explore each resort ride by ride, land by land, park by park to determine which is better. I'm your host, Jimmy, and thank you for joining me on this quest to help the greater good of humanity answer this long, elusive question, which is better, Disneyland or Walt Disney World? Joining me, as always, is Eric. Hey, I get to be first again. It's (laughs) been so long. The two greatest words in the English language, default, default. Yay. Eric is so Eric and I are solo because Dan is on assignment um, with his family and, you know, schedules are nuts. You've heard us the last couple episodes. Things are just wonky. Um, and by the way, this is this whole concept is Dan's idea. <laughs> yeah. And he has left us here to figure out how to make a funny idea actually interesting. So let's find out together <laughs> if we can make it entertaining to listen to the idea of course ladies and gentlemen is that the march madness or whatever we're allowed to trademarkly say or copyright is it copyright trademark i don't know which one march it is madness we could but, say what we want we just can't write it right yeah i guess so what, what's interesting is for a while you couldn't even say the word super bowl in a national advertisement without their proper oh, endorsement. Yeah. So it was the big game. The big game. Yeah, right. So you, anyway, I think that's relaxed <laughs> a little bit. I don't know. This is our March Madness episode. This is our bracket two-part March Sweet 16 Final Four. And it is about the Hall of Presidents. Woo! Now, to be clear, it's not about the attraction, but rather the robots. So the idea is, what is the best looking robot that most accurately depicts its picture? So therefore, this is a audio medium with a topic that is exclusively visual. (laughs) And so this is a great concept, right? So it's a funny idea. (laughs) It's a funny idea. How we were going to execute this has changed. Oh, I don't know. 400 times. (laughs) 200 of them this morning alone. Um, but we've decided on what we're going to do. We hope you enjoy it. What we're going to do in the show notes that you can see in your podcatcher app, we will have a link to a website with an article that shows you side-by-side comparisons of the presidents in the show next to their presidential portrait. So you have an idea of what all of these people look like or what their images look like versus their robot. You know, it's it's great that you found this site because just before I sat down to actually finally do just that, that I've been talking about doing this for weeks, haven't actually sat down to do it because it sounded so completely tedious to take a bunch of screenshots from YouTube videos, because, of course, I, you know, I'm not going to be sitting there right now because I'm not going to be at Walt Disney World for a few um, months. That's right. (laughs) Quite a few months. I'm not going until december at this point uh where you know maybe i would have sat down on the hall of presidents and taken a bunch of really high-res photos of them i don't know that i would have done it probably not <laughs> yeah probably not um so this this uh link if you didn't click it or can't clip it and you want to find it it is an insider that's insider.com the article is how here's how all the robots in disney world's hall of presidents compare to their real life counterparts that's the name of the article this is an update. It it came out after I think uh, Trump was put in because the Biden robots not reflected in this. But we'll get to that later. Yeah, it's from 2017, which seems impossibly long ago. That's right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So yeah. anyway, this has, there's no commentary. There's no you know, there's it's just quite literally. Here's the robot. Here's the person. Here's where we got the information. That's it. There's this is there's no political commentary or anything like that. So it's a, a very. Uh, a simple, um, harmless website. You may have a constant recommended video running <laughs> in your screen like we do. I, I can't look away. I know. I keep staring at it. Oh, but you know what? I'll tell you, Discover has an online privacy protection that is free. I want you to know that. Mm, and you can drag and drop content easily on the website of your dreams using Squarespace. <laughs> this episode brought to you by... <laughs> uh, okay, so... Uh, Eric, let's get into this, okay? Uh, let's a funny do idea. It. And we'll have our final four episode will be the second release on March 20th. Should be March 20th. Again, listener, we try to release on the 5th and the 20th of every month. 
uh, try to be consistent. That's about every two weeks. Um, as you may or may not know, because all of you probably podcast, because who doesn't? It right, takes right. a lot of work. We do a lot of research. We're not just shooting the proverbial feces. We are, in fact, doing hours <laughs> of research, making sure what we're saying is as objective as possible. Um, whereas this episode is 100% subjective, judgmental on <laughs> robots. So the final four will be guest starring Tag from DL Weekly and The Hub Crawl. Uh, we had him on last year. We really enjoyed him being here. And uh, well, quite frankly, he brought us a lot of new listeners. So, yeah. And We're he's looking for forward to it. Uh oh. Uh oh. A phone call. Why do you not put your phone on silent when you have a five minute notice that you're going to record? <laughs> hey, um, I gave you 10 minutes. You did. You're right. And, you know, Eric's been very sick. The fact that he's even doing this right now is, is uh, a testament to his dedication to you, our listener, and our podcast community. Hey, if I'm not coughing up a lung, I'm recording a podcast. That's, <laughs> that's how it goes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that's a true statement. Because <laughs> <laughs> more often than not, he's recording a podcast. Uh, All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We have 46 individuals who have become president of the United States. One of them has been president twice, so he doesn't count. So, we technically have 45 individuals. 45 robots, been, 45 robots who have been, or, you know, president robots. Um, but you can't do a bracket with 45. You get odd numbers and it's really hard to do. So we needed to get to 32 somehow. So here's how we got there. And I will also share this spreadsheet on our, uh, social media things, perhaps, uh, our Facebook groups, if nothing else, maybe after it's done. Yeah. Since it maybe. still has, well, well, we'll see. Anyway, Let's we'll cut share that it at part some point. Out where I say that we've already <laughs> determined who's going to get to the final four. <laughs> what? Huh? Um, so uh, we'll we'll put this on so you can follow along. Unfortunately, this year we're not going to have a contest, and you'll understand why later. But um, here's how we got there. So we have 32 presidents in our brackets. Uh, the other uh, 16, 12, 14. Excuse me. 32 plus 14 is 36. 46. Mm. Okay. Uh, the following presidents are n eliminated, and here's why. Biden, Trump, Obama, Bush Jr., Clinton, and Bush Sr. are all eliminated because of recency bias. We don't want to get any... Yeah, we don't want to get any, uh, you know, say anything that might, you know, upset someone about something, whatever. So they're out. Um, William Henry Harrison was only in the office for 30 days, so he's out. His robot looks so good, though. I know it's a shame, but I had to get rid of somebody. <laughs> oh, well. Um, John Quincy Adams, Nepo baby. <laughs> I LBJ. Suppose. LBJ, I eliminated him because uh, I, I believe in the conspiracy theory that he had Kennedy assassinated, so he's out. Another good looking robot looks very much like his portrait. I know. I, know. I didn't uh, think this through. This at is all. a shame. <laughs> uh, Garfield. I eliminated Garfield because I I don't like lasagna and I love Mondays. Hmm. You're an odd person, Jimmy. Well, it, Garfield, the cat, famously loves lasagna and hates Mondays. So, and I you're the thought, opposite. Well, well, okay. It's, I'm, it's not actually true. I just thought it was funny. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it was uh, hilarious. I loved it. <laughs> Warren G. Harding had a really short term. Uh, unfortunately, passed away uh, in his first. It will only term, I guess. Can't have a second term if you pass away. True. <laughs> Thanks, Grover, Obama. <laughs> yeah, right. Grover Cleveland. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Only one entry per president. And he was president two non-consecutive terms. Uh, Taft got stuck in a bathtub, so he couldn't make it. William McKinley, his robot looks like a wax figure. So I just eliminated him because of that. Okay. So you're so that, already getting up to the the robot judgment. That's right. Exactly. Okay. He did not. Now, this random grainy screenshot from a YouTube page didn't look <laughs> good. So he's out. OK. So okay. now we're left with 32, Eric. And they are. We have eight categories. OK. All right. Category one, it. the founding fathers. That's George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson and, and uh, James Madison. Okay. And then we have some wartime presidents, which is uh, hard to narrow down. But right. we have we have James K. Polk. It was the Mexican-American War. 
Eisenhower, Truman, and FDR. They're in that region, if you will. Okay. All right. And then we have uh, weird facial hair. Weird mm, facial okay. hair. We have okay. uh, Martin Van Buren, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, and Theodore Roosevelt. Okay. And then we have presidents with full beards. Mm. They are Ulysses S. Grant, John Tyler, Rutherford B. Hayes, and Abraham Lincoln. Now, you, Eric, or listener, you may be wondering, wait a minute, John Tyler didn't have a full beard. And I say, I only had three presidents that had full beards. And therefore, <laughs> I said, which president might be gay? And that's the first picture I saw. And so maybe he had a beard. That's a, that's a stretch. Thank you. I but, hope it gets uh, better. Hey, the descendants of... Uh... Of John Tyler can register their complaints. With, uh, <laughs> the Tyler estate is coming after the Supreme Resort. <laughs> yeah, it just just call Jason and let That's him right. know that you're um, you disapprove. There you go. Please do yeah. call Jason. Yeah. He, he likes to hear from people. Oh, yeah. OK, that was the Western region, if you will. Uh, the Eastern region is these four brackets. Uh, presidents with names that have four syllables. <laughs> I was getting not desperate. exclusive. Yeah, no, that's true. They were the ones that were left. And this right. is the categories I came up with. Uh, we have uh, presidents with attempts on their life. Now, there are more than just four, but these were the four that were left. OK, uh, alliteration presidents with alliteration in their name. So they could be Marvel heroes, but instead they're presidents. That's correct. Yeah. OK. And then the rest. Those are the categories <laughs> and the rest. So here are the four syllable presidents, Richard Nixon, Millard Fillmore, James Buchanan, Andrew Johnson. Yep. Try it out. Okay. Richard okay. Nixon, Millard Fillmore. Anyway. Thank you uh, for the that. The rest are Franklin Pierce, Zachary Taylor, Benjamin Harrison, and James Monroe. Um, attempts on their life. Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, Andrew Jackson, and John F. Kennedy. Uh, okay. Some attempts were more successful than others. Uh-huh. All right. Finally, alliteration, Herbert Hoover, Calvin Coolidge, Woodrow Wilson, and close enough, Gerald Ford. Because, <laughs> sure. you know, G comes after F, so it's real close. I'm looking at my keyboard. You're right. Anyway, <laughs> those are the brackets, my, ladies my and gentlemen. My keyboard's in alphabetic order, by the way. Is it? You don't have a QWERTY? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, oh, okay. I, do they make those? I, I assume so. Well, they do on my phone. Oh, that's really, that's really weird. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, that fe that that feels uncomfortable. I think looking at a keyboard like that would make me very confused. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, because we are trying to land on what is the best depiction of robot versus portrait, we could sit here and go through all thirty-two of these names and compare their portrait to their robot. And we're not going to because well, I was going to say, let's get started then. <laughs> they, we're not going to because that's boring. So what I did, I took the liberty of arbitrarily eliminating to get to the sweet 16. So Eric and I are going to do the sweet 16. Once we get to the final four, we are going to then pass it to us in the future. And we're going to do a full episode on the final four of these robots. All right. All right. So here we go. We're going to start with the founding fathers. Uh, Adams and Madison were eliminated. So now we have George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Okay. So, so if we look at Ooh. the robot for George Washington, it's a very famous image. He's on our money, right? You've seen. Yeah, we've all seen George before. Yes. His robot looks a little bit like a baby. I think yeah. they did a good job making his like his lips kind of protrude because of wooden teeth. Maybe <laughs> he's very smooth, very smooth, like a baby's bottom. And Not his eyes, his eyes have some age on on them. But I mean, who can tell with the powdered wigs? I don't know. He doesn't look a lot like his presidential portrait. No, maybe? definitely not. I mean, you get it. Like if, if you were if you didn't know if you didn't have the picture side by side and you looked at the robot, you're like, oh, that's George Washington. So true. That's fair. That's fair. But when we look at Thomas Jefferson, maybe it's a better shot. Maybe it's better lighting, but it looks a lot closer to the actual portrait, almost at the same angle. Uh, I like the, the, I guess I think the distance really helps, but his hair looks good. All, all of these, by the way, yeah, he's got the right lines on his face. His jawline right. looks, looks 
Yeah, Correct. it's got kind of a, a longish nose, right? And the other thing is, I have to say, I think what does Jefferson over Washington is that there are two Thomas Jefferson robots Ooh. at Walt Disney World. Yeah. So I'm going to go Thomas Jefferson because we have two examples. Now, I'm not looking at the two robots next to each other. One would presume they're the same. It, they should be the same sculpt. Maybe they aren't because it is a younger. It, they probably aren't, actually, because it is point. a much younger Thomas Jefferson at the American Adventure. And Very good point. I'm I'm having trouble pulling up his image in my my brain notes. All right. So <laughs> we now have eliminated George Washington. It is now Thomas Jefferson representing the founding fathers. Oh, sorry, George. Sorry, George. Uh, Okay, so now in the uh, wartime presidents, we had James K. Polk, who was beat out by Eisenhower because I decided (laughs) for no reason. And then uh, Truman and then FDR. So we have in the Sweet 16 showdown, Dwight D. Eisenhower versus Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay. I do like the FDR sculpt. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm pulling up eisenhower here now, polk's a good one too by the way he looks a little like the crypt keeper but that's a good image <laughs> true i did the eliminations before i looked at the pictures so uh, <laughs> I, eisenhower looks pretty good too i mean he's got a little glint on his his forehead because he's got such a such a severe receding hairline but um hmm they're both seated both robots are seated which FDR is being seated is appropriate yeah that is appropriate um Hmm. And Eisenhower, maybe his hair, yeah, he's, he might be slightly younger. His hairline's not completely, completely gone. His yeah, like presidential FDRs. portrait is really, um, yeah, it's, this it's pretty is a severe. tough one, Eric, oh. because I think, I think they're equal. However, yeah. I'm going to go back to the most recent argument we had on our first Sweet 16. There are, in fact, two FDR robots. At Walt oh, Disney World. Oh, yeah. Another American Adventure clone. Okay. So because there's more access to robots, and that's what we're all about here. Eventually, our president will actually be a robot, and then they'll have a human represent them in the Hall of Presidents. <laughs> it's just a guy. Uh, that's right. Uh, my, my name's Glenn. I'm here for uh, <laughs> President at X237. That's right. <laughs> so therefore, we now have FDR representing the wartime presidents. In the final four, it will be, oh, never mind. We don't know yet. Uh, so it's going to be Thomas Jefferson versus FDR. Now let's El- move on Elite to- Elite eight. That's, that's a little tough because they both have extra- I, I'm just saying. Yeah. Mm. yeah I should have okay. thought this through better. Okay. Then we're going to move <laughs> on to uh, weird facial hair. Uh, Van Buren beat out Chester A. Arthur and Grover Cleveland was beat by Teddy Roosevelt. So back to our handy little- uh, article we have Ooh, van buren yeah. v teddy okay scrolling, van scrolling. Buren i like the teddy one i really like the teddy is. one it looks good teddy looks his, great van buren's pretty good oh go ahead yeah. i think theodore roosevelt's robot looks better than his actual <laughs> picture oh all right who else am i looking for um martin van buren martin i, I like bb They've got the uh, the wild um, mutton chops and side hair. I don't know what you call that do, but uh, they got big bushy eyebrows. Uh, he, he looks pretty good, too. Um, hmm. I'm Definitely a shiny, find. a shiny chrome dome there. Uh, but if I'm going to uh, call upon precedent here, because mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah, both both are very good representations. Um, Teddy's got some good some good brow ridges there. But calling on precedent again, um, Teddy present at oh my gosh, the American I didn't Adventure. Even think about that one with John yeah. Muir. With John Muir, yeah, bully That's funny. beautiful, <laughs> bully beautiful. <laughs> yeah, MVP. He he does look good. He's got the bushy hair, but I think again it's a tie, and and I think the fact that we have another robot of them is that it though that's it right of presidents we um, had jefferson and of course benjamin franklin the most famous president who was never president 
Um, <laughs> Franklin came up multiple times. He sure did. Despite we were trying him to not out. being an actual president, we've, right. we've we've wanted to include him so many times. Wouldn't it be funny if? So yeah, Teddy's yeah. in the in the Yosemite Valley scene. Yeah, FDR's at the podium making his famous speech. All the I mean, there I mean, yeah, there's Kennedy in the end the rest portion of the thing, but after World War II, there's no more robots. Um, yeah. Yeah, that is correct. Just like uh, my high school, well, every history class I've ever taken, you get up to World War II and we learn about World War II. And then, right. uh, sorry, I know not the, a lot happened since. I know the book has Vietnam in it, but uh, we don't have time to learn about that. <laughs> yeah, let's let's. I don't. <laughs> I don't know how to teach that. Right. Next year we're gonna start over again in ancient Egypt, and we'll do the whole thing again. It'll That's be great. Right. Up to World War II when history <laughs> ended. Okay. <laughs> So Teddy Roosevelt, uh, okay. three in a row, but I don't think we're going to have that happen again because those there are, are no more robots in the American yeah. adventure. Uh, uh, we're going to have to work for the next, <laughs> the next bracket. This is going to go without saying folks, um, Ulysses S. Grant beat out John Tyler. Um, and then Rutherford B. Hayes was beat out by Lincoln. Yeah. I think this is kind of a no brainer. Uh, Lincoln's <laughs> affiliation with Disney and all the things. So many I mean, Lincoln robots. Yeah, so many Lincoln robots. There's like two at Disneyland alone. There's probably one in storage somewhere in Flushing Meadows. <laughs> um, uh, th- I will say for posterity, uh, Grant's robot looks pretty, pretty really phenomenal. Does. It actually probably looks better than Lincoln, but for the sake of this ridiculous concept, <laughs> um, Lincoln beat out F- or U.S. Grant. So there we go. There's the Elite Eight on the Western Division. Moving over to... <laughs> the remaining presidents that I needed slots for that had four syllables in their name. <laughs> Richard Nixon up against Millard Fillmore. James Buchanan up against Andrew Johnson. Johnson beat out Nixon. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Johnson beat out. Johnson beat out. And so did Nixon. So it's not Nixon v. Johnson. Nixon v. Johnson. we're looking at. Oh. Um, it's Andrew hmm. Johnson. Who came I- before. Um, by the way, my president memory. Outside of the, the top t- uh, five are real bad. <laughs> so you, um, uh, that's that's worth mentioning because the Lyndon B. Johnson robot is pretty good. Yeah, I called him LBJ. He was eliminated on account of being um, responsible for Kennedy's assassination. Okay, of course. Of course. Andrew Johnson came well after fact. Abraham Lincoln. Right. That's a pretty good. That's pretty good. Um. Yeah, that is a pretty good sculpt. I like the. Uh, the white, um, the white, yeah, the, the white accents of hair. The, yeah. yeah. What do they call um, that? The widow's peak or whatever. No, what do they call that? I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. White his sideburns are white. Sure. <laughs> and it's hard to tell because his presidential portrait is black and white. It is an actual portrait, not a painting, but they really, and this is what Eric and I were talking about is that I think that the robots have progressively gotten worse because we have more visual reference to what those individuals actually look like. Between high res television, um, just you know, myriad of still images, news, all the stuff. So we know the right. nuance of these things. Whereas Andrew Johnson, we may not even have an audio clip of the man. So it's really hard to accurately depict, say, Obama, because we know what Obama looks like. Oh, too right. well. We've been seeing him for for a, a few decades at this point, and right, yeah, Another Andrew reason, Johnson. There are some pictures <laughs> right and so the imagineers doing a good job of replicating a still image so when i'm looking at this i'm like hey they did a good job recreating that still two-dimensional image into a three-dimensional figure they've got his kind of a scowl the other thing we were going to do is try to watch the hall of presidents and just see the nuances of the different animatronics and watch them as they listen to you know, Lincoln do his speech or listen to the current president do whatever. And there just didn't seem to be a lot of that. A lot of like they they move a little bit. Right. Yeah. And they like they'll wiggle their foot. One of them's got a is writing notes. I forget which one it was, but that was kind of a cool little feature with a quill pen. You know, Um, they all nod their head when they're introduced, Mm -hmm. which is a nice little feature. Some of it looked very lifelike. You know, some of them wiggle their foot as they're sitting, you know, kind of a couple of them turn to each other and do whispers, which obviously 
you know, inaudible and they're not actually saying anything, but that's kind of a nice touch. Yeah. But rather, we're just focusing on what the robot looks like. Ulysses Grant really looks good. Yeah. <laughs> it's too bad. Yeah. What a shame. All right. Yeah. Uh, so good representation of Andrew Johnson, who is the successor for Abraham Lincoln. Scrolling in order, getting to Richard Manixon. Yeah. Nixon looks um, pretty, pretty fit. Yeah, he sure in, does. In his robotic form, he's got a little bit of the jowl, but he might be a little younger than. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's my thing. I, okay. In another case, totally. Oh, by the way, the Kennedy one is awful. Oh, yeah. He looks very bloodshot. You talk about uh, you Puffy. talk about somebody that looks like a, a wax figure. It, yeah, we'll we'll get up to Kennedy soon. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, here's the thing. I think again, the whole thing I was just going through with depicting an, a still image, they did that very well. But um, unfortunately, I think, despite the fact that I think that maybe Johnson's picture or, or robot looks better compared to a still image, we know what Nixon's mannerisms were. I think that because Nixon has so much affiliation with Disney, Disneyland. The I'm I'm not a crook speech was at the Contemporary Hotel. He famously stole Walt Disney on the monorail. No, Walt, Walt Disney, Disney stole him. Stole him, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, so I think because there's enough affiliation uh, of we're, Nixon. So we're establishing an interesting additional pre- precedent here, yeah. Jimmy. Are you sure you want to go down this route? I don't think I have a choice. This is a Disney podcast, and it's real <laughs> boring to talk about robots. I just speak for yourself. Well, here's the thing. We couldn't do this episode and have anything to say about the actual president. Again, the reason we got rid of the top, you know, the last six presidents, because there's people aren't getting upset about Nixon so much anymore. But, you know, you say Bush or, you know, whatever, and it triggers people. So, right, right. So you just can't really. And we don't do we really want to do a presidential history on their performance and their. No, no, and not the at things all. They pass. So it has to be arbitrary and it has to be superficial. And because this is a Disney podcast, I think it's Nixon. Well, if it if it helps any, I do like the way his cheeks are, are rendered on the robot. I do. I agree. Um, yeah, I think that it, I. His jawline is captured reasonably well. Yeah, I, they're they're both very. These two are especially considering that Nixon is a more recent robot, like you were saying. Right. I think both are very well done. Um, yeah, but, but again, I'm stick I think with Nixon. Yeah, I, yeah, I think Nixon, um, because we are like we were just talking about, we know more about him than we do of that still shot of Andrew Johnson. That I think they did a better job recreating that still image, mm-hmm. whereas I think that. Disney Imagineers did a better job at maybe recreating the nuance of Nixon and it's subjective and and I'm in charge. So hey, that's what's happening. Great. Great. Cool. Um, And I agree because I have to. (laughs) That's not everybody. Jimmy has been has been um, threatening me for weeks. That's right. (laughs) Get in line or you're out. I'm going to stop not paying you. Yeah. Wait, does okay. that mean you're going to pay me if I disagree? Oh, dang it. Stupid double negatives. <laughs> okay, then uh, moving on to, so the, so in this Elite Eight on the Eastern whatever, currently Richard Nixon, in the rest category is Franklin <laughs> Pierce, Zachary Taylor, Benjamin Harrison, and James Monroe. I eliminated arbitrarily. Uh, Franklin Pierce and James Monroe are up against each other now. Oh, okay. Franklin Pierce was- and James Monroe. Okay. Um all right, early um yep. scrolling, wait, scrolling. Nope, went past John Quincy Adams. There's James Monroe. Okay. Um Yeah, he'd be number 5, wouldn't he? Franklin yeah. Pierce. Ooh, that's nice. He's got a huh. Oh, you're looking at Monroe. Let's look at Monroe. We'll it, sorry, yeah, I just I I Yeah, I had a better grasp of where Monroe right, came James in the order because <laughs> he's um, early who he is, his portrait is obviously a drawing because photography didn't exist then a painting yeah yeah a painting uh that I think they reflected his hairline he's obviously a little older this robot's a little older but you can see in this picture if you're listening at home remember I mentioned a president writing on a feather quill it's <laughs> He could be a compromising position for James Monroe, but that's the one I was talking about. 
Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It, it looks like he's a little older than his portrait. You know, his hair is a little whiter. Wait, wait, wait. He's, he's not the one writing. There's somebody in front of him who's writing. That's what I mean. And oh, okay. the positioning oh, of I, the feather oh. quill could Ooh. be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tune um, in to find is out that what, what a French tickler about. is? It's somebody <laughs> writing with a quill near you? In front of your crotchal region? <laughs> Um, I, I, I don't know. I think I kind of like Pierce here. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Let's move down. He's, Pierce. he's past, Pierce. uh, Taylor Millard, Fillmore, yeah, Franklin that's Pierce. A better, it, it's a better robot for sure. He's, he's even got his kind of arm up going to his chest, kind of like he does in his portrait. He's got kind of greasy hair. If I remember, yeah. Pierce was kind of a dandy. He's a young president. Maybe he should have been in the beards category. Ooh. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, he's a dandy indeed. His hair is kind of long. And a wavy, a little curly. And I think it's a really good re- depiction of Franklin Pierce. So I think our okay. review, Franklin Pierce, is the winner going up against Richard Manixon. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Moving on to attempts on their life. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, Andrew Jackson, and John F. Kennedy, I think, for Whatever reason, Andrew Jackson beat out Kennedy. I think it was because his eyes looked weird. And then uh, Ronald Reagan. Yeah, Jackson's robot looks, yeah, he's kind of awkward. So Jackson versus Reagan here. All right, Andrew Jackson. I mean, you you always see the kind of swept back sort of, I mean, his portrait is, yeah, I don't know. yeah, his hair's kind of swept back in the portrait, very kind of puffy. His hair's almost kind of curly in the robot that they might have based this off of a different picture. He's got um, some of the features. He's I mean, his features are, are yeah. pretty good. I really like it. I like the way he's standing. He's, you know, his arms are folded. OK, OK. It's a kind of a nice look because, you know, I noticed when the presidents were talking or their arms were at their side, they were like like they were awkward teenagers, didn't know what to do with their hands. So I actually think the <laughs> robot looks better with the arms folded. I think it depicts the images that I recall of Andrew Jackson. But let's look at the who else was that? It was Andrew Jackson versus versus Reagan. Reagan. Oh boy. Yeah. Um one of the latest president is he the he is the latest president we have in the that we've left in the running. That's right. He is the oh. most recent. We took him in because we thought that maybe you're talking about Reagan. He's so glorified at this point. I don't think there's a lot of I mean, I don't think he did a lot of great things for certain groups of people. I think we had a booming economy in the 80s, tear down this wall, etc. Yeah, he did some he did some stuff. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I like his robot. He's got the the facial characteristics like his hair looks pretty good. It, it does. looks kind of looks, lifelike. That's good. Yeah. The eyebrows are good. His He's got um, the, the lines around his mouth seem yeah. realistic. He 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 has rosy cheeks without looking like he's just a, a bad yeah. wax figure. You know, what it almost looks like, Eric, is that they were using the source of like his later years in acting because it looks like younger than he's he ever younger. was in office. Right. Yeah. It's almost like they took a lot of his Hollywood references and put they got the cheekbones right, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to say this is another tie, but because uh, if you may recall, ladies and gentlemen, this is a Disney theme park podcast. And you may remember a little video on July 17th, 1955, starring one Mr. Ronnie Reagan. I was going to say Art Linkletter, but OK, oh, Linkletter was there, of course, he was the <laughs> host. But Ronnie Reagan was one of the little co-anchors. So I think Ron Reagan beats out. Andrew Jackson. Okay. All right. We've established that precedent. I'm um, this is a this is also a fake judicial show. That's right. Let's see if that <laughs> let's see if that theme continues. Um okay. Then in final final category, uh alliteration. Herbert Hoover beat out Calvin Coolidge. Okay. And because I wanted to be ironic, Gerald Ford beat out Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> uh Woodrow Wilson, uh, his I, I I do like his robot, but OK, OK, that's right. fine. Gerald Ford. Uh, I'm glad you, we can change it. Yeah, mm. Ford. I like the eyebrows in Gerald Ford. Yeah, let, uh, let me let me look at Ford a little closer here. All right, let's see. Um, Hoover and Ford. Hoover and Ford. Oh, I might. I might. 
his eye maybe it's the lighting his eyebrows look kind of weird on ford yeah it sure does i kind of um, yeah that blue light is hard but they really did get the hairline i think the eyebrows are a little bit too dark compared to the he looks a little evil <laughs> a little minorly evil Just slightly it, evil. different from most of the presidents he looks slightly evil okay let's look <laughs> at hoover Go back to Hoover. Hoover. Fortunately, if you're listening and you're scrolling along with us, this is not just wasted airtime because you too are scrolling up this article. Yeah. Keep moving back and forth. Watch that video on the side and click on the ads. <laughs> um, we don't get anything from that, but you can do it. Tell them we sent you. Uh, ooh, mine ended, uh, by the way. It, your, your video, mine just keeps rolling. Who, I like Hoover. Hoover's sculpt. Oh, his, man, I his, went way past him. His hair's pretty good. The lines around his his mouth are are look like they're I and mean, they're sculpted pretty well. Ooh, I like Woodrow Wilson's. Um, I told you Herbert Wilson's Herbert. pretty good. Oh yeah, I like Hoover. I remember liking this one a lot. He, I think this one does a better job than Gerald Ford. He, he okay. kind of got like a baby face a little bit. I think they got the hairline pretty well. The eyebrows, the big forehead. The nose. Yeah, I think they did a good job. I say Hoover. Hoover over Ford. Yeah. Hoover over and, Ford. And even if we you had picked Woodrow Wilson, I'd still pick Hoover over Wilson. So it's kind of a moot point. Um, All right. So now we're at the Elite Eight. And Eric, look at the time code. Um, yeah. And I think it's I think it's exactly the amount of time uh, that we need to um, a- after which we need to have an ad for our sponsors. So how about that? Let's take a break. We'll see you real soon. Your attention, please. (laughs) To all who come to this happy place. And we're back. We're back. Um, All the blue chews, buy them all. (laughs) Okay, so we have the Elite Eight, Eric. Eric and I were talking at the break, and we were having a difficult time deciding between... Thomas Jefferson and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, as you remember from the Sweet 16, both of them have two robots at Walt Disney World. So That's all tough. things being equal and their, their, their robots are, let's say, equal in quality. And they're both pretty good. Yeah, pretty good representations. Yeah. And they both have two robots. So what would differentiate Thomas Jefferson's robot from FDR's two robots, the two robots versus two robots or the president that's themselves? Right. Well, what is the, the, the Jefferson outside of having two robots doesn't have any Disney affiliation at all. What about <laughs> FDR? No, no, Jefferson would not have any Disney affiliation. Um, FDR was at least alive during, uh, I mean, at the same time period as Walt Disney. Um, the, the I think we could get more into this if we move him further, but I mean, some of his policies definitely helped keep the Disney studio afloat during wartime. Interesting. And helped to technically create the Disney park as we know it. So, well, that's it. I mean, that alone gives him more affiliation to Disneyland than Jefferson. So mm -hmm. I think by default, FDR is in the final four. And then now that he's in the final four, we're going to do a little more digging about his sort of relation to disney i think okay Uh, and you know come to think of it as i'm looking at this nixon versus pierce reagan versus hoover lincoln versus teddy roosevelt teddy has two robots but lincoln has like 40 um (laughs) right i mean and and all nixon reagan lincoln and fdr all have some affiliation with walt disney the individual with the theme parks so I think rather than arguing their their portrait versus their robot, I say we just move the four relevant Disney related presidents into the final four. What do yeah, you think? M- perhaps the listeners would be more interested in hearing about how these presidents influenced Disney as a company or the parks in in whatever way that they they did than uh, listening to us talk about um beard structure on a robot (laughs) i like that better actually i I like where we landed here because the idea the concept high level we're going to argue for at times two hours on which (laughs) robot 
is better at the Hall of Presidents because we don't want to offend anybody. That's real boring in execution. So I think we did that a little bit, some of it arbitrary. But then where we landed was we have four final four robot presidents who have some level, some higher than others, I don't know, impact on the Walt Disney company, on yeah. the individual Walt Disney, and on the theme parks. Because mm-hmm. obviously they all have robots and theme right. parks. Um, they all have some kind of affiliation, Reagan being at the opening day, like we said, and Nixon being stolen by Walt. And FDR and well, his don't laws. don't ruin the the uh, next episode there, Jimmy. Well, I already said <laughs> all these things in our in elimination round. So here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have our final four: uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt versus Abraham Lincoln, and Richard Nixon versus Ronald Reagan. So Ooh. our final four episode will be arguing those four and which of the four of them have the most affiliation influence let's say which one of them is the most disney that's going to be our final four with tag and dan and we've got a we we still have to keep some of the the robot characteristics in naturally in the mix of course because this is in fact which is the best robot but it's really hard because again it's so (laughs) subjective trying to be as objective as possible about this let's see if we can land on what has both, both the best president robot and the best Disney fight or the biggest influence on Disney. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. So there we have it, folks. We're going to see about posting this uh, bracket. So you can still at home decide who you think would be the top two. And then ultimately the winner, we might be able to come up with some kind of contest for that, Eric. I don't know. Uh, because again, it's so opinion. Uh, true. This is going to be tougher. I mean, all of these have been opinions all along. And I know I know last year's was a little bit of a surprise. Well, I mean, landing on Haunted Mansion wasn't that big a surprise, but some of the twists and turns along the way were pretty surprising, I would say. Agreed. Do you think if Rise of the Resistance was in contention that it would have won? You know, we, we this came up recently on, on the Hub, Hub Crawl. Crawl. I listen. And... Uh, Hey, yeah, I don't know. I guess it kind of depends. It, it it's such a weird choice because it, it it means such a difficult choice because it's it's not a normal pre-show. There's so much. I mean, what other pre-show has you actually doing stuff instead of just watching a video? Well, I mean, at Disneyland, technically, you're on a ride. <laughs> you're on an elevator ride oh you mean haunted mansion not yeah haunted not, mansion sorry yeah. yeah that's right but you're Disneyland right is haunted mansion no need but, to speculate listen to the hub crawl ladies and gentlemen there you um, go <laughs> all right so that's it we'll see about posting the bracket we'll see if i mean you know what the four are so you can do your own bracket it's real easy and if you want to email us think telling us who you think is going to win um maybe you'll get a t-shirt i don't know there or you a go. cameo I don't we'll all, what are our email addresses? Oh, that's a good question. I am Jimmy at ears up hyphen podcast dot com. Got a new computer. Don't know how to link that uh, account to my Ooh. email. So okay. you can also email jhunt at concierge dot com. I get that email. Uh, e Johnson at concierge dot com. Also, i um, Eric at ears up hyphen podcast. Nice. Now. Finally. Finally. And Dan at ears. So if you can't reach us, then you're not trying. <laughs> um yeah so that's that that is the final four uh eric before we go i want to number one thank you for doing this at lo- such short notice <laughs> and ill nevertheless you had a fever this morning uh, i did and i was in the hospital two days ago <laughs> and to hear him listener you would never guess to look at him you would never guess you, that's you the magic well, of my friend. drugs yeah <laughs> this episode is brought to you by drugs <laughs> do them <laughs> um don't do drugs okay so uh eric we are going to be together i am very excited <laughs> we, to announce. we are we are going to be together for like <laughs> is this four, a threat or a promise <laughs> no both oh we are going to be together for four consecutive days that i'm aware of in april at disneyland yeah I am very excited. We are staying at the Hojo with the water park or whatever, water playground. Uh, it's one that is recommended a lot. I, I've, I've booked it for quite a few people. They really like it. It's yeah. adjacent. There are, in fact, rooms that we have a block, thanks to Lynn Barron from the Sweep Spot. We have a block of rooms that face the park. 
it's going to be pretty sweet. I'm looking forward to this trip. It's a it's a Concy Ears uh, training trip, yeah. technically. Um, and uh, yeah, that the whole the whole point is we're all going to hang out. We're going to do some bonding. We'll learn about Disneyland. We'll learn about social media and how to uh, be better than Jimmy and I are at social media. Oh, my God. Tell me we're about We're terrible. <laughs> well, some by choice. Um, anyway, so, yeah, we're going to do that. We have we have quite a couple of days planned of like going to this. We're not just going to like go around and ride every ride, but rather there's going to be specific I, what stories about different attractions. What, what kind of things are we going to be doing? I don't know the full idea behind it when it comes to um, when it comes to all of that. But I guess it's going to be a lot of d- uh, discussion about. Um, yeah, I'm sure some of it will be the stories behind the attractions, but it, it's going to be a lot of discussion around how accessible they are, what age groups can be appropriate for them. The, the idea is so that we can talk about uh, what. You know, we we can talk about these rides to people who may maybe have not been to the parks before. If we're going to talk up uh, the these two parks before somebody were to go to them for the first time or even people who've been there a few times and don't necessarily know everything about the parks. Sure. It feels interesting to me. I know that, for example, Lindsay, who works with me, has never been. So it's very exciting for her because she can actually speak to it when she has clients that are interested. Oh, yeah. Um, For me, having worked there, grew up there, I mean, countless numbers of of visits, it would be like you coming to my house and giving me a tour of my backyard. It's like, yeah, (laughs) I know. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Well, maybe we can get into some areas that uh, we... might not have necessarily gotten into before. Ooh, what a ah. tease, Eric. We'll tell you all about it, listener, after that trip in the end of April. If you're going to be at the Disneyland Resort area uh, on or around April 27th, is that right? 26, 27? Uh, is it before then, after then? I, I'm i not sure. It seems impossibly far away as somebody who's been... Well, I don't think we're really famous enough to uh, be concerned about people like stalking us. So we'll be there 24th and 25th. 24th and 25th. We'll be at Disneyland. 26th, we're going to be at Universal Studios. Uh Oh, (laughs) Dan won't like that. Um, Yeah. So if you're around, uh, by all means, uh, Tom, Club 33, (laughs) anybody else, anybody else uh, who might, well, he has Club 33 access. That's all. There we go. Anyway, so we'll be there. If you want to look us up, come say hi, ride a ride with us. I don't know what the schedule is, but we'll be there. And I'm very excited. And also, I booked a subsequent trip on the 26th for 27th and 28th for a new client with Concierge. Very coincidental. Same week, overlapping days. We might, uh, they, I think they're staying at Universal Sheridan on that Wednesday that we're at Universal. So maybe we can connect with them and say hello. His name is Scott, very friendly young man. Uh, so that's a new concierge client. I will mm, put them okay. in test, I promise. <laughs> yes, please. Also, we like to pay you when you do work for <laughs> thank you. concierge. Also, um, this is unrelated to that person, but I was in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I was meeting with a, an executive from the company Salesforce.com. That's a big company. <clears throat> we were having a meeting. We're having dinner. He's telling me, I, we're just kind of getting to know each other. You know how you do. you like, I'm interested in this. And you find common ground, right? I was talking about uh, my passion for Disney theme parks. And he's like, oh my gosh, my family and I, we're going in April to Disney World. And, you know, we're staying at the uh, Wilderness Lodge. We've got a four-year-old and a three-year-old. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You've got... If you've got the funds for Wilderness Lodge, you've got the funds for the beach club. You're going with three and four year old. Take them to a place where you can walk to the theme park or you can take a gondola or whatever, because Wilderness Lodge just is kind of remote ish for the Magic Kingdom area. Yeah, I love it. But you're right. You're right. It is. It is a little remote. So anyhow, they're like, well, we already have a planner, but this is what they recommended and whatever. And I'm like. All right, that's fine. If you have any questions, and I just kept going on and on with my knowledge and nerdiness, and he's like, uh, "Do you mind getting on the phone with my wife and I tomorrow and talking us through this because this is very intriguing?" And then, like an hour into this conversation, we're going. I'm just <laughs> doing me. I love this, so I'm I'm going through every nuance and here's why this and that. And they're like, "Would you just book it for us?" <laughs> I said, sure. So Andy. they're going with another right. couple, and eight thousand dollars later, we have a new client. 
Mm, so there you all go. All right. Repeat business and word of mouth. Uh, That's right. Big, big, big deals in this uh Well, I think what concierge does differently than your regular travel planner, and you've heard this before, but it's real. Your regular travel planner is just going to book your stuff for you. And then it's your turn to book your dining reservations, book your theme park reservations. uh, And I'm doing it all just like all the concierge do. So this same family, you know, the 60 day mark, which was, you know, last weekend, I had another hour with them. They're like, okay, here are the restaurants. Here's what you should do. You've got a three and a four year old. So, you know, do a princess thing and Cinderella's Royal table will be princess again, come the time you're there. So let's do yeah. that. Uh, we look at, you know, fairy, you know, the, the, the beast castle, you know, be our guest restaurant. We talked about, you know, just different character dining and space two twenties an interesting thing or whatever. So we decided on two restaurants they are Cinderella's Royal Table and Space 220. Okay. It was int- it's unique. And it is yeah, completely. Definitely worth going at least once, as I yeah. mentioned on Years Up a few weeks back. Yeah. And I'm happy to say that at the 60-day mark at 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning, this young man woke his uh, tired ass up and <laughs> got them both. Excellent. Well, wow, that's tough. Both of I them. Know. I was like, that's this really well for your trip. But the fact that I could get these... At 6.01, you know, a minute after the opening time. But are you saying that it might be a little bit less populated or are you just saying that you're, I think it might you've be less infused populated. this trip with with luck? I think it might be a little less populated to get okay. to get, you know, I mean, everything was available. It was, it was mm-hmm. like I just scrolled and like you could get anything you wanted. Oh, wow. So I'm excited for them. It's a good time of year after spring break before Memorial Day, kind of that sweet spot of end of April, early May. That is kind of the quote unquote slow time at Disney World. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, listener, that's what concierge will do for you. It's just less hassle, even if you do it all the time and you're a parks junkie uh, like Tom, our friend who has nothing to do with uh, our new closing catchphrase. (laughs) Um, He does cruises like he's a cruise junkie. He's got a T-shirt that said like. They just seem to book themselves or something like that. (laughs) Um, But he's like, listen, I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going on this cruise. But if you'll get paid for booking it for me, let's just do it. We did it for a Disney cruise. I'm doing it for a Royal Caribbean cruise for him. Um, And that's just nice. It's a nice favor to from a listener that says, hey, I'm going to do this. I know how to do it. But if you do it for me, somebody's going to pay you money for it. You know, you've entertained us. (laughs) ish more or know. less maybe you, more or less you've entertained <laughs> us for hundreds of hours so uh anyway thank you for that tom really appreciate it i don't appreciate the catchphrase because it was my idea oh yes of course <laughs> of course it was <laughs> anyway so eric do you have anything else you want to share with our listener or talk about well um no okay great <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it was a weird one without Dan. I love Eric, but uh, we had really no content or substance to talk about. So. We, we had plenty of content. Look at that. Look at the time code here. We, we got to the final four. They are FDR versus Abraham Lincoln and Richard Nixon versus Ronald Reagan. Go take a look at their robots. Watch the watch the videos. Uh, think about their affiliation with Disney. And who do you think is A, the best robot and B, the most Disney, God, what's the word? What am I trying to say? The robot with the most impact on Walt Disney, the Disney theme parks, and the Disney company. How about that? I, I think that works. Yeah, I don't Great. think you can sum that up in just a word. So. Yeah, that's right. You get yeah, the I idea, hope fine, listener. Yeah. If you don't, email us and tell us what you think. <laughs> um, all right. Well, until next time, be good to each other, and court is adjourned. Eight five six hour ears. <laughs> Godsears.com. Other shows. There's other shows too. Uh, <laughs> ears up, ears up, put in depth. The Star Wars show, Bantha Milk. Oh, they're doing live Mandalorian thingies now every week. 
as live? it's open. Not live, like the next day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can um, tune in and watch them while they right. record. Puny yes. Pod. We should do that, by the way. Puny Pod, also episode two just dropped with the Hulk Incredible or just Hulk? I forget. The Incredible uh, Hulk. No, it would be the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, they, they're, right. they're working on Iron Man 2 right now. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll tune in next fall when the movies start getting good. I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are the other shows. Did I miss one? That's it. Phantom. Oh, Scraping the Vault. Took the oh, yeah. hiatus. Your own we'll show. Be back. We'll be back with, uh, with the next, I think it's Kronk's New Groove. Ooh. And I hear that's a good one. I hear that I hear the Emperor's New Groove was good. I have not seen it, so I have not to watch seen that, that before I watch Kronk. No, that's one of the few that I haven't seen. Oh, okay. If you can believe it. Uh, anyhow, I think that's it. That's all the plugs. Um, oh, uh, PewDiePod, Phantom Mouth. Oh, Mandalorian, episode one, uh, season whatever this is. Um, meh. No, well, there wasn't a whole lot going on with it. That's true. Yeah, meh. That's what I'll okay. say. That's my review. But I will listen to the Bantha Milk podcast to get more quantitative substance. <laughs> okay. All right. The end. All right. Court is, court is adjourned. The end. <laughs> court is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> Stop recording. <laughs> uh. Eric, how's my game? <laughs>